Hello, and welcome back to Master of Orion 2. We're down a Met, but we have... A Meta! Yes. So, that was the humans. We found the nasty humans. Hey, hey now. Those guys are diplomatic, yo. Yeah, they're diplomatic, but we're going for a diplomatic victory, so they're kind of our enemies. We're going for a diplomatic victory? Yep. Why? Because I... It... Go... Wanted to have a fairly decently long playthrough. It's so. called... Dude, no, it's called Cat and Mouse. You let them... You, you basically make it so your enemies will crumble under your feet, but you let them build up thinking they have a chance, and then you just basically stick your thumb on their throat, and they all blow up. Wait, can you do something where, strategically, you can, uh, uh, let your opponents build something up so that you may steal it from them later? Yeah, to a degree. I mean, you can... What well, Here's what you can do, which is really cool in this game. Um, you do have the ability, in battle, to, um, fight against other ships. Now, as long as you don't blow them up... Oh, you're the Yakari, nice. Um... With, yeah, I saw that. So you're basically giant bird man. You're, you're basically giant birds. Birds are jerks, but you've given them the ability. <laughs> now, 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 hear me out. You've given them the ability to be super intelligent, where they can research everything in a field. Interesting. Yeah. So they're hey, creative. They're diplomatic okay. jerk birds. There is no diplomatic jerk bird in this game. Don't you get it? Well, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> So, um, you digress. I digress. Getting back to what I was saying really quickly, um, you do have the ability in this game where if you get into a fight with an enemy fleet of ships, if they, like, stay, because sometimes they'll just run away, um, you can move forward, and if you get close enough, knock their shields out and immobilize them, and I think there's a technology that even if they're not immobilized, as long as their shields are down, you can board their ship and steal their ship from them. Now, the drawback to that is you can't retrofit it. And I believe unless you have another technology, you can't even repair the ship. So there's that drawback. The other thing is like, um, one of the races I saw in here already is the Darlock. Um, Darlocks are basically super spies. Um, they get a plus 20 to all spying. Um, both, uh, I believe, yeah, it's, it's basically a plus 20 um, defensive and offensive, I believe. Is that correct, Worm Talon? I think so. Yes. But, yes, it is. So, so basically, it means like, if I run into them, it's and I took minus ten spying to even out my my points. But there's also ways around that where if you have like a lot of spies, you build in defensive mode. Like, I don't know what difficulty that is, but like from normal on, um, like what'll end up happening is uh, the dart. Like every every um. Uh, in, in tutorial and easy, enemies won't spy on you. They just don't. That That's just, they, I mean, and if they do, it's a, it's probably a rare thing. Like right there, a defending spy was killed. Basically, normal and above, um, what ends up happening is enemies will spy on you. Like, they will spy for your technology. So you have to have, like, a shysta ton of defensive spies, which costs a lot of resources, but... Otherwise, the Darlocks will just strip you clean, like that, because that's what they're yeah. good at. Yeah, and we just got into a research treaty with the humans. So, it looks like, um... And what I'm... all of this, the ship customization is only available because I have tactical combat on. If you don't have tactical combat, the game will just auto-generate your ships. Which is kind of not the best usually because there are. Well, well, what's how many customization options is there with that would make that, like, how random can the ship crafting be? A lot. <laughs> yeah, it. You can get things that are very nearly useless just because the game says, "Oh, that'll work." <laughs> yeah, but the problem is. Hey guys, in engineering, we're like, oh, we stick this uh, sniper rifle scope on top of a shotgun. What do you think? <laughs> um, but yeah, like, what'll end up happening is, um, 
there are certain weapons in this game that are just broken beyond belief. Um, the problem is, is that, um, and, and it's one of the ways you can win on Impossible. You have to know what the modifiers are for each weapon and how they're generated, like distance reduction, damage reduction, all that stuff. Yeah. The enemy, or uh, the computer for the most part, will always try to have as many weapons as it can on a ship. Like, it doesn't build ships based upon, like, oh, we've got this brand new, uh, we'll say, uh, a mass driver. I mean, that, that's, that's you know, very, very early game. Not, not like early, early game, but it's like in the mid-early game. Yeah. What a lot of times what you can do is, um, because there's so many different things you can adjust with the mass driver, like point defense, all these other options, it's a very useful thing, probably till about the mid-game. What the enemy will it, do a lot of it's sorry, very good. No. It, it is very, very good for the early mid game to mid early game. Right. Early, early mid to mid early, yeah. So what the enemy will do a lot of times is let's say for instance they have like um oh say anti missile rockets, um like mass drivers, you know, stuff like that. But their their current like their best technology is at least one to two um, tech choices above that. Like, that's their best stuff. Sometimes what they'll do is you'll encounter a ship that just has, like, just ungodly amounts of stuff. It's got, like, 99 anti-missile rockets, 35 uh, mass drivers with absolutely no customization to them. And... And that's going to be less effective than... Uh smaller amount of stuff that's been modified to be very effective exactly and now it the computer has a way of um sometimes getting you when you when you're not thinking they can so that's the thing is unless you know the dynamics of each individual weapon what unlocks certain if, um modifications and other things because like you can't just have like a mass driver technology and then all, all of a sudden decide <coughs> Oh, I want this, like, uh, this, uh, option with it. What ends up happening is when you research the mass driver, I think it comes with, like, heavy mount and point defense, I think. Yes, that is correct. And, and then, is it like, similar to, like, how, you know, Civilization games have kind of, like, a tree that you go down in order to unlock certain things? Yes and no. It, it is in that aspect, but where it changes is... You simply, can't go back, really. Exactly. In this one, you can. And what I mean by that is this. Um, whereas in Civilization, you're, you're researching everything. You will research everything. In this, depending on um, whether or not you're creative, uncreative, any of that, you... Uh, oh, nice nice move there, picking up that Spymaster. That's actually really useful. Yeah, he's nice. He is really he's, good. He is, he's someone that I always take if I can find him. Yeah, because his defensive and offensive abilities with spying is very useful. And he does do a lot to offset the racial minus I took. Exactly, exactly. That was a good pickup. Um, getting back to talking about like the differences, Civ Five is, like I said, you will research everything. It's just, you know, you're going to research it in whatever order. In this, you don't always have that option, and certain technologies give the modifications for the lower tech stuff. So, like, let, let's say, for instance, he chooses, uh, you know, a cloning center. This is a complete random thing, but let's say, for instance, the cloning center gives a modification to the mass driver somehow. Even though you've already researched the mass driver, um, the cloning center may make this make them realize, oh, well, we can, you know, because we have cloning technology, we can make everything smaller now and more efficient, or we can basically make it, oh, you've pissed off the Antarians. Great job. Dude, look at that thing. That thing looks like a giant speeder of idiocy. But, <laughs> it, yeah. It, really? It, it, it did, dude. It looks like a spider to me. It really does. Like a giant spider that's like, ay, 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 with like five mouths or something and yeah. like, when, they're only when Abomination! I, when I Let's was a talk kid, to that, that portrait terrified me. Yeah, that thing is... I, I can see that. Okay, I, like right here. Do you see where he goes, mass driver, heavy mount? It In there, it, there's heavy mount, point defense, 
more things will unlock as you increase your technology in other areas. Specific things will unlock specific modifications. That's the big that and that's why mass drivers are so great is because of the fact that they have so many modifications that do different things. Now, now, now like right here, he went to the laser cannon, armor piercing, no range dissipation, continuous. Those can become so broken if you know how to utilize them. It's not so much the base damage that you see, it's so much knowing what is possible and keeping like the, the biggest distance. Like, mass drivers don't have uh, range reduction, I believe, when fired. Correct. Which is huge because of two things. Two hit calculations in this game are based upon distance as well as damage is based upon distance. Reducing that allows him to stay as far away as he can, getting the best hit. Basically what he's doing is he's allowing the best two hit chance, regardless of range, and the best damage possibility despite range, which is a big thing. Trust me, in this game, it can make or break a ship, depending on how you play. Yep. Now... Uh, yeah, okay, so... That's pretty much how damage calculation works. It's based on the base damage, and then the rest is based on how far away you are. Uh, well, there's other different... There's other things. There's like, does it hit the shield? Does it hit the armor? There's there's a lot to it. It's just... Like, like right here now... Oh, wow, man. Those par Yeah, see, they have particle beams. Par particle beams are nasty stuff. They're, they're nasty. Oh, yeah. Like that dreadwing just got shredded. Wow, dude. Yeah, that. Yeah. That. That's not good. See, he's got lasers right now. He's pretty much toast. See, the, even these little Antarian ships, they're nasty. Now, one of the biggest drawbacks of these in. Wow, those Antarians, dude, get wrecked. I. Yeah. I. I try, but. It was nowhere near enough to fight these the Tarns. Yeah, they, they start out with a massive technology advantage. So you do know the, the fastest way to kill them, though, right? If you can get one, as long as they stay clustered together, all you have to do is just get the one in the middle, and it blows up, and basically it's little. If you can get that, it does so much damage to everything else. Like those raiders, yeah. Like that, that does yeah. a ton of damage to ships, and basically you can set off chain reactions. Yeah, those chain reactions are awesome when they happen. Yep. And I have so, used those. Uh, did put one burns up, the other nearby take damage from the resulting explosion? Yes, they do, and if you, certain things triple the damage done. Yeah, like, but the other thing is that they'll also, like, he saved his planet there, that, yeah. That was a smart move. That th those 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 uh, people did not die in vain. Yep, we we managed to survive. The planet did not die. Which yeah, like well, and well, and part of it, the early on. In this is interesting to say the least. Oh yeah, it's it's actually very intuitive. Like of the three masters of Orion, this is by far my favorite of the combat because it really forces you to think from a combat perspective it really does like in the first one comparatively um what ends up happening is you can just clump like thousands of ships together like you can only have six types of ships in both of them um the difference is in this one you can make a bunch of different like you can only have like so many ships you can make but in the first one it, you have to scrap the old ships to make new ones in this one you can just keep making ships and changing layouts and it won't, you, you don't have to scrap anything. So you could literally make like, in essence, a football team, if you will. This guy's the quarterback. He does other stuff. Ooh, a space dragon. Well, goodbye. Space dragons yeah. usually protect really, really good planets. And um, that, that one was a Terran planet with natives. <laughs> was it rich or ultra rich? I think it was ultra rich. If it's ultra rich, then yeah, that, um, I don't know if you touched on, like... Um... Oh, hold on, hold on here. Sorry, but mine had to stop for a moment to register the fact Space Dragon? Space Dragon, in fact... If... Ridley? No, no, no. Get, no. Yeah, get this. Space Dragons can actually invade the universe 
you'll get a, there'll be a thing. If it comes to your planet, he'll say something to the effect of, well, if you pay me so much money, I'll go pick on someone else. You could actually bribe I, Space Ray. I've done, I did do that in this playthrough, but in another playthrough, I, I had a space dragon come to one of my planets and he's like, pay me 500 and then I, and I'll leave you alone. And I paid him and then he's like, okay, tell me where to go. And yeah. I sent him off to one of my, actually, one of my allies' planets because <laughs> we, were, we were kind of fighting diplomatically and just ended up destroying that, that planet. Yes! Population. Yes! <laughs> yes! Hey, hey, you it don't just, fuck with Ridley, man. <laughs> no, it just shows that Worm has the capability to not be true neutral from time to time. Yeah. So, um, that was apparently part two. Uh, yep. Everyone get ready for the next exciting episode of Masters of Orion 2. Apollo, you, you, trust me, it's a wealth of information. It looks like a slow game, but trust me, you won't be disappointed with how much fun it actually is overall.